Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to another q and It's been a little while since we've done the last one, uh, but as always, questions were collected on the Discord. I also shouted it out on the post thingies feature on YouTube this time around. Um, but if you want to join in on the next one, then of course, head over to the Discord link that's in the description of pretty much all of my videos. And then uh, you can ask your question over there, the next one that I do do one of these. Uh, but of course, for now, let's just jump right into the questions. Kemia Capitani asks, I hope I didn't butcher that name. What are your plans for Endwalker and what are you most excited for from the new expansion? Well, plans so far are level Gunbreaker, that's the first thing, then level Warrior second, because those are the two jobs that I'm looking to take into Savage when that comes out. But of course, got like four weeks for that, so that's plenty of time to level both of those. Um, then I'll be doing some extreme trials. Uh, we are still technically sort of looking for like an eighth member of our static. So we already have someone that's like a tentative yes. Uh, as our eighth member but we'll be doing some extreme trial runs with them to see how they mesh with the group uh, and then we'll see whether or not he likes the group as well and then we can see where we go from there um, outside of that just leveling the new jobs i'm really excited for both sage and reaper so those will probably be a third and fourth job on the list i'm going to be looking to level uh, unless of course like i'm not really a big fan when i finally get my hands on them of course and then it will mostly be looking at uh, other content already uh, from like the media tour and such to see which jobs i'm most excited for to get to 90 and then just level stuff um, as for what i'm most excited for from the new expansion just leveling the new jobs that's always something that i enjoy a lot in this game uh, not necessarily the leveling process but just getting new stuff at level 90 getting to play with new rotations uh, learning new jobs that is pretty much what i enjoy the most in this game uh, and then of course taking them into extreme trials maybe in the, the normal motor rates as well uh, that is what i'm always uh, really excited for so that is pretty much that leveling jobs uh, are definitely the first things that i'm looking forward to the most in endwalker and of course story is going to be a lot of fun new raid as well uh, but getting to play new stuff or at least experimenting with new rotations new skills and such as well uh, even for existing jobs then Armstrong asks, when will you stop playing Final Fantasy XIV? Well, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Like, at the moment, I don't really play the game all that much. Um, for example, last week, or well, I guess technically this week, I did play the game a fair bit um, because I was subbing for Prog for a friends group of mine. But if that was not the case, I probably would have just only logged in on Sunday to do my mount farm, which is tomorrow, of course. Um, because at the moment there's just not really that much stuff in the game that I am motivated for, I guess I could say. Like, there is still stuff to do for me, but not necessarily stuff that I'm super motivated about wanting to do. So right now I'm not really playing much 14, uh, more focusing on other games, like for example Genshin Impact had Inazuma come out, so I'm playing that a lot right now. Um, outside of that there's a couple of other games out there as well that I was interested in, so I'm playing those. Um, but at the moment, not really playing much 14. Taking a break from games can always be very healthy as well. But I don't know when I'll actually, like, completely quit the game. I don't really think I will, to be honest. Uh, at least not in the foreseeable future, because I still really enjoy playing the game. Uh, whenever I'm not really interested in it, I just take a little break from it, or I just play it not as much. Like, for example, right now, once a week with the primal farms. Uh, that still is fun for me every time that we go and do those as well. Um, so I don't really see myself quitting anytime soon. I've pretty much come to a point in my life, I guess, where there's a couple of main games that I play, and even though I do take breaks from them quite regularly, like Destiny 2 is another one for that, but then every time a new expansion comes out, a new season comes out, uh, in Destiny's case, or then like a new patch in Final Fantasy's case, and I always come back to it, enjoy it for like a few weeks, uh, and then I just go back to being a little bit more into break mode, I guess you could say. Uh, and then I just come right back when the next update hits. Firo asks, cat girls, bunny girls, or lizard girls? Well, I never really liked myself being a cat girl, I guess. I don't think I've ever been a cat girl either, outside of maybe like the very first time I tried the game. Bunny girls, I have been one at some point, um, but I think they're too tall, so not really my thing. Uh, I actually still have a screenshot for that, I think. I'll just throw it on screen if I find it. Uh, and then Lizard Girls, uh, I do prefer Lizard Girls out of the three, those would be my favorite. Uh, I have been one at some point, like maybe two or three times as well. Uh, I switched back and forth a couple of times between uh, Lizard and Lalafell. Uh, if I could choose and could put something into the game, then give me a Lizard Lalafell, because I would really like to play that, like Auras. Uh, one of the main reasons why I even got into the game in the first place, because Heaven's Sword was kind of like, I can play a dragon while riding a dragon, while fighting a dragon. thought that was really cool, because I like dragons a lot, if you didn't realize that yet. Um, 
So I really enjoy playing Aura, that's also what my first character was, eventually went Lalafell and never went back really. Um, but if I could, I would like to be like a Lalafell Aura, I guess, like a mixture of the two, like the, the fat potato, but have the scales and the tail and that kind of stuff. Uh, that is what I would like to be, uh, if that would ever be possible. So out of the three, Lizard Girls uh, would be my go-to over there. Zarit asks, for your favorite class, what new skills do you hope that they add to it? Well, my favorite job is Gunbreaker at the moment. Um, what they could add, like AoE Blasting Zone maybe. Outside of that, Gunbreaker just feels amazing to play right now that I don't really know what else they would add to it. Uh, yesterday on stream, we actually had a little bit of a discussion about it with some other people that threw their ideas in. And there were some really cool ideas, like for example, a system where, well, first thing was like a third cartridge, but I don't really think that's super interesting. Um, but like a system where every time that you spend the cartridge, you would then kind of like stack up to something special. Like for example, how White Mage has the Lily system. Like you have your normal Lilies, you spend those, and then you have the Blood Lily, kind of like that. But for Gunbreaker, where every time you use a cartridge, it builds up to like a special cartridge move that you can then use uh, that does a lot of damage, kind of like the Blood Lily. Uh, so maybe something like that could be really cool, definitely be open for it. But outside of that, I really don't know. I'm very bad at coming up with new stuff uh, for jobs that I already like playing. Like, for example, there are some jobs that I might not be super, uh, like, a really big fan of. And then I could say, like, okay, what if they did something like this instead to make it feel better? Like, kind of with Summoner, how I have some ideas for Bahamut. Um, but for jobs that I really like playing, it's always hard for me to say I want them to change this. Because if I really want them to make too many changes, is it really my favorite job then? Kind of. Kind of like that, I guess you could say. Moving on, Nox asks, do you think Party Finder Savage groups are intimidating to players? Uh, certainly, like I personally don't really like Party Finding myself either because you never know what you're gonna get stuck with. Um, I also feel like a lot of Party Finders set the bar really high, especially when it comes down to like practice groups, they want you to have watched the guide, uh, they're expecting people to get really far, and I can see that as a new player coming in, uh, it could be very daunting because you're like, well, these people expect a lot from me and I don't know what my own capabilities are. Um, if, of course, you're just looking for uh, a farm group or something like that and you're farming the content as well, uh, it can be just really annoying trying to find that group because it literally could take you hours before you find a group that can clear the fight, like when you're just doing weekly savage groups or something like that. Uh, so yeah, it can definitely be intimidating to people. Other people just like to do it, uh, like just jump into a trap group and hope that it's good. If it's not good, it's just memes and that is the fun about it. Uh, so it definitely depends on what type of player that you are, but I can definitely see uh, why people would find them intimidating. Then Shepard asks, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions about different jobs? Um, I feel like probably for tanks and healers that they have much more responsibility than they really have um, because a lot of people think I'm just going to play DPS so that I don't have responsibility which I guess when you're leveling and doing dungeons is kind of the case because who cares if you're not doing damage, right? Um, but as soon as you throw in a DPS check with an Enrage, that's where DPS players actually have responsibility as well. It's mainly that whenever a tank or a healer makes a mistake, it's much more obvious that they were in the wrong than when the DPS is playing bad, I guess you could say. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that Astrologian and Dancer are bad because their damage output is bad. Um, which is also something that I see a lot of people say, like, Dance is just bad because it doesn't do damage. Well, it provides a lot of damage to the raid. And that is something that a lot of people don't look at, is the raid contribution that certain jobs provide. Um, because Dancer, at the high end of play, is the most preferred range because it just gives the most damage. And something with Astro as well. Um, for example, healing with Astro is also incredibly nice. Um, because the difference between healing, because when I was playing Scholar and learning to heal uh, in the Savage Raid tier, when I was playing with a White Mage, I was like, okay, I have a lot of resources that I can use and I can heal with the White Mage. And then when they switched over to Astro, I was like, can I please use my resources as well? Because you're just taking care of everything, or at least that's what it felt like to me. So uh, I guess that would kind of be it. Tanking and healing uh, seem like they have more responsibility than they really have. It's just that when they make mistakes, it's much more obvious than when a DPS makes mistakes, because uh, that you probably don't see until you reach the end range and then you know people aren't pulling their wave. And then of course, Dancer and Astrologian, people think they're bad because their personal damage output isn't that good, uh, but then they do provide a lot in raid DPS, which puts them really up there as well as some of the better jobs. Then Shoko asks, going into Endwalker, what changes, additions or reductions to the role actions would you like to see? 
Well, I don't really think I have that many things I want to see changed about role actions. When I first read this question, I was like, I want ultimatum back, uh, which is like the AoE provoke. But then thinking about it really with the new tank stance as it is right now, we don't really need it anymore for dungeons. Um, because if you lose aggro, just like throw on one AoE attack and you pretty much have it back. Uh, although having like a backup provoke, it was still nice for that. Like if you provoke the boss, you end up dying. Okay, you come back to life, you can now use ultimatum to provoke it like that. Um, or of course, if you're like in a multi-target scenario where you can just provoke two bosses at the same time. Could be kind of cool as well. Um, but things that I would like to see changed about actions that we have right now is rescue. Put it on a lower cooldown. I really like using rescue when I'm on healer in 24 man style content like for example the Lubrum Regine is the last piece of content where I really felt like I wanted more charges on that thing like not just a lower cooldown give it like two or three charges as well um, because I would often see like one maybe two players in my group that were new going into the content or that were making the same mistakes quite regularly and then I would always just be like okay I know that when this mechanic comes up I might have to rescue that person and sometimes like you just couldn't because rescue wasn't off cooldown yet uh, so that's something that I would like to see. I know, of course, there is a lot of meme potential with rescue as well, um, but when it is used for good purposes, then it is a lot of fun that it would have more charges because it's fulfilling for me as well. Like, I just saved that person. Usually you also get a nice message in the party chat saying like, oh, thanks for rescuing me because I would have totally gotten hit by that. Uh, that's something that I would kind of like to see. Then Eve asks, predictions for the next ultimate. Are there any mechanics from Torden or Nidhogg Extreme that you would like to see elevated to an ultimate level? If I'm really thinking back on those fights, because I haven't done those in a very long time. From Nidhogg, I guess they could do some stuff with the, the wings, like the hot wings. Uh, maybe like change some stuff over there. Or the fire orbs, like the fire orbs, they could probably make them rotate around the arena. Maybe create some different patterns that you have to dodge through as well. Um, outside of that, I'm not quite sure really. Maybe something with the dives and then the baited puddles on the floor. Uh, maybe they could do something with that. But I'm very bad at coming up with like ultimate style mechanics, I guess you could say. Uh, as for Thorden, it would probably be something with the Knights of the Round where they're all standing around the arena. You get the tethers, you have the AoEs on the floor. Uh, you have the AoEs like on the outside of the arena. I think it's like ice that's growing and you have to walk into specific directions. Uh, they could probably do something with that as well. But outside of that... Not really quite sure what I would predict to see. Um, of course, there's the obvious, like, Akmorn that's probably coming back as a tank buster. Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping to see what they do. I'm willing to be surprised. Uh, I'm very bad at uh, predicting those kind of things. Then Lunar asks, post Endwalker, do you think they'll make a major reboot of the jobs? To me, it kind of feels like jobs are reaching the point where adding more would just be too much and a new MSQ start seems like a good opportunity to shake up the lore and change the jobs up a bit. Um, personally, I think it would be really cool if they could do that. As I mentioned before, uh, getting to experience new jobs, learning new rotations and such is my favorite part about Final Fantasy XIV. Do I think they'll do it though? Not really. Um, they might do some reworks here or there, like they've done with Ninja this expansion, uh, Warrior back in Stormblood, uh, Dark Knight also got one this expansion. So they could probably do certain things like that. A complete change up from the ground up reboot, I don't think they'll do that, especially when you're thinking about like shake up the lore as you say. Um, because while it would make sense maybe for those that have been playing the game and are caught up with the story, it probably wouldn't make sense for those that are getting into the game starting with the Realm Reborn because then like where is the lore there for their job being that way when the lore only comes post Endwalker. Uh, so that's why I don't think they'll do it. Reworks for sure, I'm pretty much expecting another like summoner rework at this point. Um, but like a complete reboot, I kind of doubt that. And then our last question, Llama, how much kill for an ultimate carry, kill for a friend, I am the friend. Probably a bit of a meme question, um, but it is something that I sometimes get asked in my DMs. Uh, if me and my static can carry someone through an ultimate, how much they would have to pay us, like real money or kill. Uh, I don't do it, I don't think my static is interested in doing that either. Uh, personally, I've always felt like I would never want to be carried through an ultimate either because I am someone that wants to put in the work and then it is very satisfying when you kill. Whereas if you just get carried through the content, you're just kind of there for the experience, but it's just like, okay, I have my shiny weapon now, but I don't feel satisfied that I actually got the weapon. At least that's how I feel about it. And that's why I also don't really like carrying other players because I don't want them to feel like that as well. Of course, some people might not care and they only care about getting the clear or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how I look at it. I don't like doing carries. 
uh, so I probably wouldn't take your gill for a carry either. And that does it for all of the questions of today's Q&A. Again, if you want to join in on the next one, make sure to go over to my Discord channel. Link for that is in the description. If I do another one, I'll probably shout it out on YouTube again in a post as well. Uh, for those that are not on my Discord server yet, maybe it might be a way for you to come in as well if you are interested in that. But for now, that's going to do it for me. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for their support. And I'll see you in the next one.